That's what the um, animation design multimedia 475 game design make your own adventure game. Um, we have talked about two or three times about. Uh, examples. We are now through the case study and we are now starting into making sure that we're into the idea. Um, so today's roadmap, we're going to talk about the ideas. I'm going to talk about the entire project, the whole uh, timeline, which will be updated on Blackboard. And um, actually, no, this isn't true. Okay. So what you do need to know is this. Here's how we do this. You make your idea, then you make your decision tree. Hopefully some of you are already involved in that. Then you basically start making your page and panel structure with links without any media in it. Then you make your media, you know, your sound, your graphics, all that sort of thing. Add some interactive interaction and then maybe see how your pages cross-link and see how you could make the narrative a little bit more interesting. And then you just do a little bit of editing and that's it. And I know I make it sound easy. It's a fair amount of work. But the one way that we're going to keep the work manageable is that we're going to, um, I'm going to, if you want to go further, the one thing is, is that I will tell you that I am not about numbers. You know, my numbers are minimum. You know, minimum whatever. So I'm going to say one start, three levels of decision, uh, three or four, I think. We'll see. And then four endings, minimum. And if you want to go further with that, that's great. If you want to build in things like inventories and hit point levels and that, that sort of thing, and you want to do the research on that and build that in, that's great. So in other words, what happens is that I will not penalize you if you do not do exactly what I tell you. You know, uh, I won't penalize you exact if I don't do exactly what, what I tell you. If you go further, actually tell you the truth, you'll probably get more points. Anyway. So, let's go down through this. So, making your idea, you know, it's... I've assigned you a case study. You should have played through a couple of um, visual novels by now. You should be familiar with the, with the form. It's just a you know a short you know a short short story with a series of decisions um, you know so based on your case study think about how this is constructed and how you kind of construct it is that you know you start with your beginning you put your endings out and you kind of build the tree saying okay how do we get from point A to point B let's say that again. You set up your beginning, right? And actually, I'm going to talk. Um, I'm I'm going to make one. I'm going to talk about my my time during first in COVID and my travels to the UAE. Uh, for me, it's going to be semi-fictional, semi-autobiographical. It'll be kind of interesting. Um, and then um, you know my endings. I think what happens is that, in my case, do I get back home? Or do I just wind up having coffee out in Dira? Or, you know, or do I, do I get, uh, do I, do I, uh, do I injure myself and die in the, in the plane in Uma Um I don't know. I'm just thinking of dramatic ideas. That's all. That's it. And then choices how I get there. So, you know, think about how these choices could possibly jump you from one part of the tree to another, and that could make things really interesting. Remember last week when I was making this thing I called Pseudo Zork, which is um, 
I think what is, I called it the super amazing, awesome story. Um, and, you know, there was one point where you had to go off in the forest, you'd go into a cave, you'd fall into the cave to your death, or you'd go into the clearing and you'd get the sword and then you could go back and you could kill the ghoul. Um, you know, for the moment, I kind of decided to do this as a visual story in Wix, and there isn't, it's a little bit hard to do the coding, you know, to do these things like inventories and hit points and that sort of thing. So, you know, we're just really sort of focusing on media storytelling and interactivity unless somebody wants to do that extra research to put those things in their work. And then, of course, they, of course, will get extra points for that. So, um, so that's that. Um, anyway, today I want to start talking about the idea. Then, actually, by Wednesday, I would, uh, the next class, I'd like to see your, um, let's see here, I think I'm, asking for a full idea by Wednesday. And then by next Sunday, I want to see the full decision tree. So really all this is, and this is actually my thing starting out. Think about how you either draw out a decision tree and then fill in what I, actually this is a word, lexia. In other words, like small pieces of media. So draw lines out for your choices. Try to get it as finished as you can. The one thing that I'm going to tell you is that when you hand in your decision tree, I figure that it's going to be 80% done because you're going to be writing this thing, you're going to be building this thing, and you're going to start making decisions. You know, you're going to, you'll, you'll change things. I know, I mean, about 80% of the students you know, that I work with here, usually have some sort of change of idea in the middle. That's fine. That's fine. I just want you to get something together to get started with. That's it. Okay. Um, creating it. There's several ways to do it. I mean, okay, this is twine. I'll talk about that in a moment. The other one is, you know, the site map, which is a way to do this. And there's several tools we can use. So you can make the decision tree by drawing it by hand, right? I mean, that's the most straightforward way. And its advantages, it's quick and easy. You know, sure, you get out a piece of paper and you just do it. It's the most you know, quick, intuitive way of, of doing this sort of thing. But actually, it's one of the, it's actually one of the hardest to edit. Um, you know, in other words, it's hard to make big changes fast. It means you have to rip it up and you need to redraw it or you need to erase it or you need to do this or that or the other thing. And, you know, as well as I do, a lot of times, you know, the, the, uh, the first written execution is just really messy and not professional. You know, the boxes need to be square, the lines need to be straight, you know, in other words, um, you know, it, it, needs, it needs to be clean. And then sometimes the thing is, is that, you know, if you do it by hand, I hope your hand, handwriting is fine. Mine is terrible. That's why generally if I, if I get the chance, I don't give anyone my handwriting. My handwriting is unbelievably bad. Um, so we played around with twine a little bit. I'm going to investigate it a bit more over the next two weeks to see whether we can make it media and see whether make it, making it media rich is going to be too much of a pain or whether really the idea of making one in, in as a, as a web story makes more sense. The way that I, the reason why I'm saying this, you may say it's like, well, you know, that's that's just Wix, or you know, it's a, you know, you know, you know, or a piece of software. Really, to tell you the truth, 
Every platform, whether it's popular or not, has its own strengths and weaknesses and has its own abilities. So, I mean, in some ways, you know, I don't think it really matters whether we're using Wix or RenP or, or Twine. It's the matter of being able to give a part of a story and allow the person to make a decision. It's just the specific, and you know what? This is a super important moment. Just the platform allows these things called affordances, an ability to do certain things. And that's it. So we're just going to be choosing affordances. So that's really it. In other words, is it going to be more media rich or is it going to be more interactive or, you know, that's it. This is just interaction design versus storytelling. Um, by the way, Twine, as I said, you know, really, all you have to do is just do double brackets and it'll create a new new thing. And, you know, it's a tiny, tiny a little tiny codish sort of stuff, but it works, you know, so it's, it's pretty easy. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it, yeah, it's quick, it's easy, it allows for actual links. It, I don't know, it might be what we might use. I don't know, we'll see. Has a tiny bit of a learning curve, maybe a little code. Some of you may not like that, so that's all right. Um, I love to use this thing called the brain. You may freak out looking at this, but actually I did an entire website with this thing. Uh, I love it. It's a mind map software that's just super easy to use, and um, there's a free version of it. You could probably sort out your, you know, story really quickly with it. It's really flexible. The only thing is, is that it's kind of different to work with. And the thing is, is that when you click on any one of these things, it becomes the center, and it shows you everything relative to that place in the site map as where you're at is the center and that could get really confusing so i'm probably not going to recognize re recommend that but i'm just saying that i kind of use it for my for for my for my site mapping i'm using twine actually <laughs> so I'll show you the schedule. Let's see if we're using Wix or we're using Twine. I'm going to take about a week and I'm going to see if I can uh, get media into Twine. If so, I think we just may stay in Twine. Anyway, if we use Wix, you know, if you use Wix, uh, mashallah. Great. It means you're working directly on the platform. It's flexible. Advantages, <coughs> Wix doesn't give you a sitemap function. See, when, back when I was originally teaching web, um, I was using Muse, and Muse was fantastic. It, it was Adobe's uh, website program. And the thing is, is that it, uh, um, you know, you would either be working on things visually through each page, or you'd be... Um, You'd be clicking on things. You'd be managing the uh, the site map. Really great program. But uh, really to kind of see what's going on here is that um, you know it tells you about hey guess what you should use site maps. But guess what we don't show you one in our platform. So you need to do it someplace else. And I'm a little disappointed by that, but that's okay. Okay, so, all right, step three, making your page and panel structure with links. In, in short, and I'll give you deadlines on this at the end, so don't worry about it. Try to finish your story without media. You can cut from paste into Twine into Wix, or if we figure out the coding, maybe we just stay in Twine. This should be going from like a draft to final without any uh, without any stuff. By the way, 
always proofread your stuff. I will take off for misspelling. Next step, of course, once you've got your framework together, you've got your story together, you start making your media, you put your stuff around it. Graphics, sound, type styles. By the way, don't use any web standard type styles. Be interesting, please. Um, by the way, um, I'll um, maybe next time I'll um, I'll bring up that uh, I'll bring up that. Uh, oh, wait, no, no, no. Sorry, that's in uh, that that's an animation too. I'll show you this thing about uh, typography and, and logos and things like that. So anyway, this is pretty straightforward. Step five. If we can, we'll add interactivity. You can do rollovers, animate things in. This is kind of the reason why I'm thinking about Wix because things could be kind of uh, fun. So that's it. You know, you could give give clues with rollovers and and all these things, or you could tell little stories about the characters, uh, what before you're going through things. In other words, sort of like maybe a little post-it on the wall, you know, see, you know, talks about what happens, what happened with Karen when she was three years old and how this informs our, our story, you know. Um, sometimes I think it's always better to tell more uh, and give more depth about whatever you're doing as opposed to less. I really like that. So... You know what? I've been asked, why don't we use this? Why don't we use that? Why don't we use this? Why don't we use that? Well, I'll tell you what. Is that, first of all, I'm just going to tell you. Is that this is... Um, you know, uh, before COVID, this was a VR class done with Unreal Engine. So basically now what I'm doing is I'm going back to doing a... You know, the... Uh, game design one that I used to do in Chicago. So that's it. Um, so there's lots of different programs. You can use RenP. It has a bit of Python, but I haven't, you know, so many of you haven't gone into coding, and I know a lot of you are not real, real uh, eager to get into coding. Tyranno Builder. Not bad, costs you about 50 dirhams. It's actually pretty good, you can drag and drop things. I'm afraid I won't teach it, but I mean it's pretty easy. Um, Visual Novel Maker, it's about 200 dirhams. You know, I can't ask you to buy anything, you know, so I mean what happened, but it has a lot of tools, but it's pretty code heavy, so I really wouldn't recommend it. You can use these, but I can't really help you much on it. In other words, I can if you show me what you're doing and show, show me how it's working, I can give you ideas on how you can make it flow better and things like that, but I can't help you with the program. That's it. I can help you with the interaction design, but I can't help you with the program. So... Here's my expectations, and this will be up on Blackboard this afternoon. So, submit all submissions under Project 2. They will be encompassed under the rubric. So, game design case study is due now. Your idea is due on Wednesday, 50 or 100 words minimum. Just tell me what you're doing. AAD 475 P2 idea name PDF. Um, so your story map, you know your 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 site map. Minimum four choice levels, four endings. Okay. So the basic structure is due on the 28th of October. And then we're going to be, you know, doing the, we're going to be doing, you know, the, the, the media creation and all these things and plugging things together. And so the final uh, media-based game is going to be due on the 11th 
and that gives us the month to do the side shooter. So I probably will give you some templates and we'll redesign them and we'll do what they call a modification. Um, and that will be it. So this is everything up on the board. Uh, we're looking at, um, you know, everything should be laid out. I hope everything is clear. So thanks so much, and I hope we're, I hope you're going to enjoy this. So, okay. Until next time, when we start talking.